Welcome to Cradle and All, a podcast hosted by sisters Renita and Christine to educate, inspire, and connect with other mothers. Every other week, listen as we discuss topics related to pregnancy, raising children, and balancing motherhood with other aspects of womanhood. Whether you're relaxing, juggling tasks, or even breast pumping, join us as we figure it out together. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Cradle and All. This is Christine. Hey, you guys, it's Renita, and welcome back to another episode. We have taken a couple weeks off. We've been very busy with things in our lives, but we're so excited to be back and talking about this topic today. Yes. And so what we're going to be talking about is potty training. We want to focus a little bit on our older kids right now, which is so crazy to me to think about calling Jackson an older kid. Uh, But yeah, there's so much that goes on beyond infancy and pregnancy. And one of the first things that you experience in toddlerhood is potty training. So that's what we want to talk about today. Yeah, it is. It's totally a journey of potty training and one that we are excited to talk about because I mean, I know for me, I was trying to everywhere to find advice on how to do it and how it would work and talking to Renita about it. So Renita, do you remember like when you started with Jackson, what was some of your first memories with potty training him? Oh my gosh, absolutely. So it's so interesting because you often as parents get a lot of advice or random tidbits of information about people based on their experiences. So people would be like, Oh, get ready. Wait till you start. Oh, boys are so much harder than girls. Like all these things. And I was just like, Oh my gosh, I can't deal with any stress right now with, with something like this. So I chose not to read any books or do any preparation. I chose to just get started one day. And we decided to do it during the pandemic because Jackson had just turned two and we were like, Hey, why not? And so there are all these different kinds of methods, but we just thought, Hey, let's take a weekend and have him run around with no pants and see how that goes. And honestly, it was not great. (laughs) Yeah. That sounds stressful between the pandemic and you were probably pregnant at the time too. I imagine where it was before we got pregnant, but in my mind, we were trying to get pregnant and I was like, I don't want two kids in diapers, but I think it's really important to realize that you know, we just were like, oh, let's give this a try without even thinking, was he really ready? Were we really ready? So I don't really think we set ourselves up for success. And so we ended up taking a break and coming back to it when he was showing signs of readiness and we were a little bit more prepared. And that was maybe like six months later when he was like two and a half. Wow. Well, I remember for us, we started when Dallas was like 18 months. We actually started sooner because my husband was like really eager to get him started. So I remember that we bought a potty for Jackson's second birthday and we also got one for Dallas. So we got that Elmo potty. And do you remember that? We actually yes, bought that for so you guys. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> we bought one for ourselves. And of course, our kids are six months apart. So when Jackson was two, Dallas was 18 months. We were like, all right, let's, let's get started. But really for the most part, when we first got that thing, it was more of a step stool than anything else. (laughs) It was not a potty for several months because we, we started by just trying to get him to eat, just like acknowledge it and recognize what it was. So we put it in the bathroom and we were like, oh, this is the potty. And he would watch us potty. And we were just trying to have him associate, make associations with it. So we just kept it in the bathroom, hoping that he would identify. And that was really the first six months is just him being familiar with it and comfortable with it being there before we even tried to get him to use it. (laughs) That's such a good point. So when the very first round of trying, we got a potty that we were like, oh, we want it to look like our regular toilet. So it looks like a toilet and it has a flusher and it makes a sound. And we were like, oh, this is your potty, get excited. But he actually was looking at it like it was another toy because it made a sound and he just thought it was so cool to flush it. So it really took a little time for him to get the hang of realizing like, hey, we're doing, we need to do something with this thing, not just play with it. Mm -hmm. And then the Elmo one um, was also intriguing to him, but it had, it was more like child appropriate, I think, to use as a true potty. But it also could have been viewed as a toy because it giggled and it had Elmo on it, (laughs) but it lured them in. But yeah, so um, 
so that was our first, I feel like there were different phases for, like you said, there were phases to potty train. The first phase was let's introduce him to the potty. Let's make it something that's a part of our life. He can see it and he'll observe us doing it. And also us observing his patterns, you know, when a baby is first born, parents are so aware of bowel movements. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, how many diapers that lets you know if they're hydrated and how many, how many bowel movements, how many urine, you know, all that. And then as they get older, you thankfully start, stop counting. You're not as aware, but then when potty training rolls around, you have to start being hyper aware again. So we, that was the next phase for us was, was like figuring out his potty schedule so that we could try to get him to the potty before he goes. So we were, I remember the morning was like, oh, he goes right after breakfast. So we need to rush him over there. (laughs) How did you guys decide to do that or know to do that? Did you do any preparation or you just kind of going with the flow? Cause I remember you said like Dontrell was really eager and ready at 18 months. So how did you guys kind of know what you were doing? Well, for the first phase for me, I wasn't, I was like, he's not ready. He's not ready. He's too young. He's not even, he doesn't even know what this thing is. He can barely walk straight. So it wasn't until like about two years old when I started to do my Google searching and realized that now is the time where they say you could start and started, I started to also read up on the different, um, the different like tool or not even tools, but the indicators that the child may be ready to be potty trained. And so those are things like, you're changing fewer diapers, the bowel movements become more regular. They may be more vocal about going to the bathroom. Um, like I know Jackson was that way. I remember that. Like he would, he was very like expressive when he had to use the yes. restroom and he would like start to <laughs> his body would actually start to change. Um, so we started to be more aware after the Google research of okay, well, he's showing these signs. For us, it was primarily the bowel movements became more regular, and we're like, okay we can start working with him. No, I think that's the same thing. Second time around about that, that two and a half, two and a half year mark. I feel like Jackson was more intrigued with using the restroom. We had him go into the bathroom with my husband, Bryson every single time. So he would get the hang of being like, Oh, Hey, this is what people do in the bathroom. And so he'd be paying attention to it and be intrigued or wanting to like mimic his dad. And then also he was going longer stretches without a wet diaper. So we knew he had the ability to hold it. Like for example, if he was playing and things like that, he'd be more likely to hold it. And then once he was done with an activity, that's when he may go. So we realized, okay, he can actually hold it longer. So now we can kind of get a set schedule, kind of like how you said. So, Mm -hmm. and then that second time around, mom had actually bought us a book. I don't know if she ever used it with your kids, but this Elmo book P is for potty. And so we started reading it to him And it kind of just talks about how Elmo is potty trained, but his cousin is not. And so how sometimes you use a diaper and sometimes you, when you get older, you can use a pull-up to go potty and it trains them to like wash their hands in the book. So we were kind of reading these books in preparation that second time around, which I thought was pretty cool too. Yeah, we did. We also totally got books. So I was doing my research and then we found that like, it was recommended that you prepare your child for the potty by making them aware. And then also by maybe introducing books. And so we, um, we got the P is for potty book. It's really cute. It's like a little pop-up. What is it? Like a flip book where you can open the little sections. And we also got this other book called potty all-star, which as he was older, I think I got that for him on his third birthday. No, yeah. His third birthday but he was actually able to follow along. So I felt like the older he got, the easier it got. I actually think we started way too soon because he wasn't as communicative verbally. So we could not really understand him. And, but as he started, his vocabulary began to develop. He was following along that book. Like when we go to the potty, he'd be like, I'm a potty also. He actually started to recite some of the words from the book and make connections. And so, yeah, I think books were a really great tool for us when we were teaching him. Now you mentioned that Dallas got to the point that he could hold his poop or something like that. But, you know, honestly for us, potty training really focused on peeing in the beginning, like pooping was like, okay, once we get this pee thing down, then we'll get to pooping. So in the beginning, we just were trying to get him to hold his bladder and then poop wise, we were like, we'll just figure that out when it goes along. I don't know if that's the right or wrong thing to do, but that's kind of what we focused on. And part of it was because Jackson's like a constipated baby. So (laughs) he doesn't like poop easily. (laughs) 
<laughs> but oh my goodness. Um, so we really focused on that in the beginning. And we just were like, sit down. Like we didn't do anything with standing up yet or anything like that. We were just like, sit down and try to get the pee in the toilet. And what I did at some point was try to get him really excited for the fact that like, oh my goodness, you've graduated to pull-ups, no more diapers, except when we not, when we nap. And so we'd be like, okay, you can't get this wet. And we kind of hype him up that way. And that was one of the things that I found kind of worked for us because he was so excited about that. He, this fact that he gets to wear this new underwear that has toy story and Hulk on it and all these other things. Wow. Well, (laughs) this conversation is so funny to me. This is what parents do. Talk about poop and pee. Yeah. <laughs> but um, basically, welcome yeah, to parenthood. That's poop, pee, throw up all bodily movements. But, you know, for Dallas, for us, actually, it started off with poop because I remember even calling you because we were going through it at the same time. And I'm like, I remember the first time we did it. It's so funny to think back. I remember the first time we pooped in the potty. We were so excited. We were. I mean, I'm surprised we might've even taken a picture of it. Honestly. Oh my God. I think I probably did too, actually. And I sent it to mom. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember we were following his, his body, like what he was showing signs, like his scheduled poops that he would normally take. So it was after his bath. And we started to get in the habit of after his bath in the evening, put him on the potty. And we'd give him a book while he was on there or give him something to sit down. Actually, no, at first we tried to give him privacy. I was in the mindset of like, I don't want to intimidate him. I don't want to make him nervous. I would just kind of wait outside the bathroom while he sat in there and I kept peeking in and he'd just be sitting there. And at that age, he would not let you know. Of course, he's not going to say I'm done. So you'd have to literally lift him up and see if anything was in there. So that was my initial tactic was sit him on there get out of the way, let him do his thing and then come back and check to see what happened. And I checked and and he did it. I was so excited. So this was like before he was two years old and I was like, wow, this is about to be easy. This is so great. Like, (laughs) wow, he already did this, but no, the the first year and even today, well, he's, he's definitely potty trained now, but the first year it was like, it was imperfection. It was hit or miss. It was like a full year long learning experience until he finally mastered it. It took, that's so true. It's not like, I mean, I know people say that there's like a fast method, but that is not my experience. Like Mm -mm. there are these things out there that's like train your baby in three days and you know, good luck to the people who are able to do that. That's awesome. But that Mm -hmm. is just not how it worked for us. And then there's like these moments where you think it's going great and then something changes and they may forget a little bit, or they may not be focused. Like for Jackson, he, because we were in the pandemic, he was home with us for two months, as I mentioned. And then at daycare, he kind of acts different than he acts at home. So at home, he was going all the time doing really great. And we were like, yes, he's, he's peeing in the potty. He's not making any accidents outside of, you know, a few a day, but we get to daycare and they'd be like, oh, he's not ready. We don't think it's time. And he'd be like messing up every outfit. Cause he peed through himself all day. And we were like, what is going on? And we know he's ready. And that's when we realized his environment is different at home than it is at school. Mm-hmm. When he's at home, especially during the pandemic, when, you know, kids weren't really playing with each other and stuff like that. And Russell wasn't even here yet. He was an only child. He just had hit me and his dad. And so if he had to go, he'd like, I have to go. And we just run immediately and take him. And so we never missed a beat. But at school, he was distracted with his friends. Or if he told his teachers that he needed to go, if they were busy with another child, it may be a couple minutes and then he may have an accident. So we had to kind of adjust some expectations with ourselves because we were feeling defeated. Like, are we doing something that's wrong as parents? But we had to give ourselves a little grace to realize school may be a little different. And that's okay because he eventually got the hang of it, but that's why he was having some accidents at school and not at home. Mm -hmm. And also at home, sometimes parents get lazy. Like we get tired. I know on the weekends, sometimes I'd be like, just put a pull up on him. I don't feel like doing it this weekend. Yeah. (laughs) And we would just not body train that weekend. Cause you know, during the weekday, if you have a child that's in daycare, they're only home with you for like a couple hours, potentially before it's bedtime. Or if you have a nanny or something, it's like, you're not primarily responsible for them and their potty training for most of the day. So on the weekends, you know, I was like, sometimes I think for parents, we also can be the reason why potty training can take a while because 
it, it is that different environment between home and school and also the consistency that you really have to follow through with to get them to potty train. Consistency is really key. That was my experience that we're always, I mean, we literally, we had to just consistently be putting him on the, on the potty, especially once we, once he started to get closer to getting the hang of it, it was every couple of hours, every two hours at home, bring him to the potty. Even if you would say, I don't have to go. Yeah. You still need to go because nine times out of 10, 10 minutes after he said he didn't have to go, there was a puddle right on, you know, where his feet were because he went. Oh my gosh. I'm so glad you just brought that up because there are definitely challenges that people can hit roadblocks that you experience with potty training. And one of those things that we really hit was the resistance to use the potty. So there was a period of time where we were doing great. He was excited. He was getting so happy every time he went, but somewhere along the line, he just like stopped wanting to go. Maybe he just got over it and he was like, whatever, I'm over this thing. But we'd be like, okay, let's go potty. And he's like, no, no. And he would start crying and getting so upset. And we were like, what are we going to do? So it was interesting because Bryson and I had different opinions on what to do at first. Like he was like, we just need to force him to go. Like he'll learn, he'll get the hang of it. And then I was like, no, I don't want him to become like traumatized by us forcing him to pull his pants down and go to the bathroom. (laughs) And so it was just interesting in the beginning. And that's probably the one time that I read and tried to do some research about this was, you know, about this specific instance. Cause I didn't want to like scar him for life about the bathroom. Yeah. And so one of the things I had read, like literally, I don't even know what source it was, probably the American Academy of Pediatrics or something, but don't quote me on that. But it was saying like, if they have any resistance, it's okay to like back, back down and just let them have these moments of time until they're ready to get back on it. So we did take a little bit of a break when he was showing that resistance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is what I read also is like when they are showing resistance, there are other positive ways to motivate them instead of coercing them to go to the potty because they might associate the potty with something negative. So we also encountered that with Dallas. We still do. He's, I mean, at this age, we're not we're not like being as fluffy. We're like, get on the potty, you're potty trained. <laughs> but when he was learning how to do it, which I mean, in theory, he kind of is still, but he's potty trained. But um, but back then when he was like in his two second year of life and third year of life, um, well, two and a half, he we would try different things. So we tried a sticker chart that did not last long, but I did try like actually incentivizing him with an actual tangible item. So it was stickers, not even a chart. I would give him stickers if he went potty. And that was just a way to be like, oh, you know, just really excitedly praise him. So it was praising, it was the sticker, all to motivate him to do it again. And we also did just the positive praise. So every time he went when he was um, in the beginning and really for a very often when he was doing it at home with us, it was always a big deal. We would, my husband would call me in the room like, Christine, come look. And he'd be like, yeah. And then Dallas would start calling us mommy. So it was just such a big excitement and joy every time he went potty. And then we started, so, and then we were celebrating the things he did with the potty. So then he started to pour the contents into the toilet and we'd say, (laughs) well, You know, so we started to just celebrate. I don't know if that was a celebration because sometimes it got messy, but we started to celebrate things associated with the potty. So like, oh, you washed your hands. Oh yes, you know, that's what big kids do. So all the actions that go along with pottying were a big deal. Yeah, I love that. We did that too. In the beginning, we started off giving him like a treat, which we, that was a bad start. Every (laughs) single time he'd be like, where's my cookie? We're like, this is not going to (laughs) work. So then we changed it up and did a big celebration. We had a potty dance. We were like so (laughs) excited. So we kind of amped him up that way. But, you know, as we're talking about this potty training stuff, it reminds me of like a funny story. (laughs) So the first round of potty training, I mentioned that we did this like no pants thing. So we just like, let him walk around with no pants. And of course he was peeing everywhere. And then you didn't realize that you like stepped in a puddle. So that was clearly out. So the next thing we decided to do was stop putting diapers on him, but just put pants on him. That was also a bad idea because like he would, oh my God, he would literally be like, mom, I went potty. And I'd be like, where and we had to search the house so like he, he would poop and it would fall out of his pants 
<laughs> onto the floor. <laughs> and like he like I went Ew. and I couldn't find it. It was like horrendous. So that was a quick <laughs> X. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> That is disgusting. At least yes. it fell out and it wasn't smushed in his pants. Thank God he's a constipated baby. Because yeah. <laughs> whenever that happened in Dallas, it was not falling out in a nice lump. It oh was smushed. In I'm telling you, potty training. And then somewhere along the line, Bryson was determined that he was too grossed out to deal with dirty diapers and dirty potties. He's like, what? I never thought I'd have to clean out a potty in my life. I was like, what do you mean you never thought? You've been cleaning dirty diapers for years. Which brings me to the point that there are two types of potties. You know, you and I both said that we use the like pot, it sounds like, but the floor potty, the floor potty, but they also have the like seat that you can put the trainer seat that you can put on the toilet and have your child sit on that. We just use the pot, but Bryson was like, oh my God, I'm never going to clean out this pot. I'm like, whatever. Yeah, we, but, yeah. Uh, yeah um, <laughs> I think as he, as Dallas got older, we transitioned to the toilet, which I did read the recommendation is for the toilet because it's just, you know, where they're going to be going when they get older. And so now we use the big toilet. We, we got rid of those little ones. I hated yeah. them too. They're so gross and dirty. And then the kids are peeing on the floor and ugh, it's disgusting. So do you guys... You guys still use the little one? No, we have now... I mean, I don't even know when we transitioned over to the Royal Potty. I think that like it just kind of happened naturally where he just started using it, but it wasn't purposeful. Just one day he just started saying he wanted mm-hmm. to use the big potty. And then we stopped using the little one. And honestly, we only kept the little one because Dallas would use it when he would come over to visit. Mm-hmm. But now they both, <laughs> you know, use the big one. Yes. Well, they're both staying the night over here tonight and they're on the same schedule. Cause every time they're, they have a sleepover, they have to use the bathroom at the exact same time. Every night, all of a sudden you put them to sleep and they both are like, we have to poop. I'm like, and they what? do. They actually and they do. take turns pooping. <laughs> yeah. So now we just keep a step stool in the bathroom and we also have a, one of the training toilet things that go on the toilet seat so that it's more comfortable for him. And he doesn't, you know, like the toilet's a little too big for smaller booties. So he does have that little part that goes on there. Now, when did you start teaching Dallas how to stand up to pee? Because honestly, Russell, oh wait, not Russell Jackson. Jackson had been sitting down to pee for the longest. And the only reason he stands up to pee is because one day he saw Dallas doing it and he was like, I want to do it too. (laughs) That's how we started standing up to pee. (laughs) Well, I will credit that to Don Trell. He was the one who, who was, I think he was fed up and he's like, Dallas, you need to start standing up. So he taught him how to stand up, but it was still within like the second, the two year old time frame when he learned how to do that. But Dontrell took it upon himself to teach him how to do that. And he taught him how to aim. And I think once we realized that he was starting to get the hang of things, we made it, we changed it to that. And I think it also helped him because it was probably a little more exciting. I would imagine (laughs) as a boy to like stand up and pee and aim and all the things that go along with that. But, um, but yeah, he, he totally stands up now. So he's three and a half. He does not sit down ever. Even if he has to, I think if he has to poop, he'll probably like pee standing up and then sit down and poop. Yeah. So it's funny how kids follow each other. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think daycare environments can be different than if you're doing it at home by yourself or with a nanny or something, because even though Jackson had a hard time in the beginning at daycare, it's because he was one of the first people in his class to be potty trained. But once all the kids were doing it together, they all have their like same time that they use the restroom and stuff like that. They all wash their hands afterwards. Mm -hmm. They can kind of follow the leader and get the hang of that. Right. Yep. It does totally help. And it takes a lot of the pressure off parents to to teach them. So what about nighttime potty training? Because that's a different beast. We always had the habit of um, certain behaviors that probably weren't the best for nighttime potty training, which is having a glass of milk before bed. And then as Dallas got older, he wanted water by the bed with him. But you guys, I feel like found success with potty training overnight fairly easily. What did you guys do? I think again, it was kind of a slower transition with everything. He's now four. He's been four maybe for like a month, but he's only been consistently not going to the bathroom 
in the middle of the night since like three and a half or so. So I guess like six months, but he still has accidents. Like he had an accident at nap time yesterday, which was like so random or not nap time. I was on Sunday, which is so random, but it'll be like every couple months he has those accidents. Hmm. So for us, he would only wear a diaper in the very beginning. He only wore a diaper at night. And then once he was going long stretches throughout the night and not having an accident, we started putting him in pull-ups at night. Mm -hmm. Then our next step was nap time. We would only put him in underwear and not a pull-up because at first we were doing pull-ups at night. And then around three and a half or so when he was having these long stretches of no going in the bathroom, we would take off the, we would let him wear underwear to sleep, but we would start encouraging him to as part of his routine to go to the restroom before bed. And interestingly, that was not always part of our routine, but we made that like a new part of our routine just to ensure that he didn't have accidents before bed. So now that he does that, he knows that he has to go first thing in the morning and mm-hmm. right before bed. And those are the times that he always goes to the restroom to make sure that his bladder is empty. The few times that he'll go to go to sleep and pee at night tends to be if he drinks something before bed. And that's not a typical thing. And honestly, he sometimes doesn't even realize it. Like the other day he was like, mom, I'm so sweaty. And I was like, baby, you peed yourself. Mm. Like you're not sweating. So like sometimes like in those situations, he doesn't even always notice it, but we were going through this really weird experience with him, which like was driving us bonkers. So like in the middle of all this potty training stuff, maybe around three, he was completely potty trained during the day. At night, he was going through this experience where he would just take off all his clothes and just sleep naked. Like, we don't know why it wasn't hot, but he was just doing this. I think he thought it was funny, but he wasn't potty trained at night. So every morning when we woke him up, the bed was soaking wet and he was naked. And I was changing sheets like every night and I was getting so frustrated and we were trying to figure out how to discipline him without making him ashamed or upset, but it was so (laughs) frustrating. So thank goodness this child is potty trained now and not taking off his clothes at night. (laughs) Yeah. I remember you guys were like trying a bunch of different, I remember you guys were trying a bunch of different things to get him to keep his clothes on. (laughs) Yes. We put his, his pajamas on backwards, his pull-ups on his, um, zip up outfits on backwards. Bryson (laughs) taped his diaper on him once. (laughs) Like we tried everything. We were looking up to see, do kids do this? Like, why would he take his clothes off every night? (laughs) We would go in to his room secretly at night before we went to sleep to see is his clothes on or are they off? (laughs) Like we were doing everything and this was going on for months until finally he just like grew out of it. (laughs) that is hilarious they do so many interesting things that they grow out of that reminds me like when Dallas used to sleep by the door he would not sleep in his bed he only slept by the door he would bring his blanket to the door and fall asleep there and that's where we would find him every day we couldn't open the door because he was at the door of his bedroom (laughs) oh my god and then finally they just grow out in these kids brains (laughs) yeah they just like grow out of it like it's nothing right then one day it's but once Jackson got the hang of it like once he knows how to go through the whole night he's so proud of himself he's like yeah I didn't pee at at my bed at night and you know it's just it's so great to see when they're proud of themselves and they've done something and and somewhere along the way they get the hang of it even when you're going through like the worst part of party training where you're frustrated or you're just feeling like you're never going to get there just remind yourself like adults usually don't pee the bed at night. You're going to make it. (laughs) They'll find, there'll be a time where they're going to not pee the bed or, you know, make it to the potty in time, Mm -hmm. but they may go through some regressions. Like there had, there were times where we thought we were completely done with potty training. And then he kind of slid backward again. I think having Russell, he maybe was like getting adjusted to having a new brother or something like that. He started like having accidents again, every now and again, I don't know why, but you know, he got through it. Did Dallas ever do that? Um, Regressions? Yes, he still does. He's not perfect at all. I don't know when they finally flipped the switch, but I feel like it can take a while. I remember even when I was teaching, there were kids in kindergarten that would still have accidents. And sometimes they're triggered by things that cause them to use the restroom or have accidents overnight or even during the day. Like, um, so with Dallas, we still, we might put on a pull-up during nap and overnight. And like you said, he's not, he may be going through weeks and stretches of nothing. And then suddenly 
something happens and he's peeing at night. And I don't know if that's because of a regression or because it's just a hiccup in, along the road. Mm-hmm. But, that, you know, speaking of along the road, when traveling, that's another thing with potty, when you're potty training or when you have a little one that's still in pull-ups, you're not 100% there. That's something you always have to plan for, for long trips. So with Dallas, we have taken several long car rides with him during this potty training process. And for us, like last summer, we went to the beach and I mean, in the car ride, let's say if it was longer, even if we're going somewhere on the weekend, we had to drive a couple hours when that, when he was potty training, we'd put a pull up on because we have re- encountered far too many times, even if it was just a two hour drive, sometimes he would use the restroom. And I remember I was so proud um, when he started to say, I have to use the restroom and he would be holding it. We would stop at like a gas station or something for him to go. But um, before that time came and we really didn't want to, to, to find that out the hard way, we would definitely put a pull up or diaper on between for longer car rides. And we also made sure to bring the potty when we get to that vacation spot or wherever we're going to be staying at. Y'all and we brought made, the potty. Yeah, we bring the potty. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes, 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 yes. Definitely. I mean, it's easy. It's compact. It's easy to travel with. You just throw it in there. Wow. And, and then, you know, it kind of keeps that reminder of you still have to do this just because we're not at home. Doesn't mean that you don't have to do this. And we'd still take him to the bathroom and <laughs> have him use the, the toilet in the, the big people bathroom. But yeah, we totally bring it and we try to stick with the routines and schedules, but we, we always have the pull up on as a backup. Yeah, no, I mean, I guess we made it through potty training and never brought the potty with us, <laughs> but we definitely tried to keep with our routines of like the times we go to the restroom or like asking him a million times, like, do you have to go? Do you have to go? Are you sure? Before a car ride, we try to do it before and after. There was a time when Jackson was in the middle of a soccer practice and he's like, I got to go potty. And we were so proud because he like knew to stop, even though he was mm-hmm. doing something fun. Um, but we were in a public place. So like Bryson would take him and have him stand up and do all that other stuff. So, and that was before he was kind of standing up to go. He, at this, that point he was just sitting down. So just kind of having Bryson be the one to coach him with that was kind of helpful. Of course, you know, if, if I was with him, I would have done the same thing, mm-hmm. but, um, yeah, we just, you know, got to do what you got to do no matter where you are and just continuing to like encourage them and, you know, praise them like you would, however you do it when you're home. Right. You know, something you just said or made me realize, like, how do you actually teach a little person how to recognize that sensation to go potty? I mean, that's really the crux of potty training is making your child realize when they feel that sensation that they need to sit down on the potty and not just, you know, go on themselves. And I was thinking like, well, how did we do that? I remember trying to explain to Dallas how he would feel when he has to go potty. And I, I, you know, so I think that for me, teaching him about those sensations was a combination of those books, combination of me trying to explain to him what he may feel like. And also just getting them there to the potty before it happens so that they can associate pottying with that feeling after they've already done it. That's so interesting. I don't think we ever talked about this sensation of going. A lot of how we were doing training was more getting the urine inside the bowl. Mm -hmm. So like when you go, make sure it goes, you go here. And so any, in the very beginning, when he wasn't sure what to do, some of it was literally just putting him on the toilet and letting him sit there. And he would just be sitting there and sitting there. He may want to get up and be like, Nope, just keep sitting. And then when the pee came out, we'd be like, yay, you did it. Look where it is. And I think with time he was like, Oh, let me do that again. Mm -hmm. So, but we never were like, Oh, you're going to feel like this. I mean, I don't know. I, I mean that I just thought it was a miracle when it actually happened, but <laughs> that's interesting. Like the different approaches that people have to it. Yeah. I honestly thought like, that is how that's what you're teaching them is like, Oh, you feel like this. So you go there, but yeah, I can understand your, your approach too. of like, this goes in there. <laughs> yeah. We're like, Let's make it in this area right here. And when you do, we'll all celebrate and clap and cheer. <laughs> Oh yeah. Uh, potty training. It's such a headache, but it's such a joy when it's over. Right. I wonder <laughs> when what it, it. <laughs> I wonder what it'll be like potty training of the second child. Now oh that will gosh. go, maybe it'll be easier because they have somebody else in the house. Now they have three people in the house that are potty trained. 
<laughs> yeah. Currently I have two people who keep the toilet seat up. So I'm about to have a third. Um, <laughs> but I was just thinking about maybe I should try to do early potty training with Russell. He's about to be 18 months. Maybe I should give it a yeah. try, but oh I think gosh. it's important to realize, like we said, the readiness, you know, are we ready? Are our kids showing signs of readiness, which he is not, but also parent readiness. Like I didn't think about it at first, but like, it's a lot of work. It can be a lot of frustration. And sometimes it's just easier to wipe that child's butt and put a diaper on. Mm-hmm. So, you know, <laughs> at this point I am not parent ready to potty train at the no, second job. I can't even imagine him doing that yet, but I guess it's time. He's eight, I mean, it can be time if you're ready and be wow. And you know, I remember when I was one of my previous jobs, this woman and I had babies around the same age and her child was probably no more than 12 months. And she said she had already began potty training. So there's some wow. method out there called the limit. I think it's the elimination method. Yes. My partner <laughs> did it. My, um, Coworker at work did it with their daughter, um, Candy Burris from Rural Housewives of Atlanta. They did it with their um, son, Ace, I think, like early, eight months. Yeah, it's early. You basically, I, I mean, do you remember how it works? I, I mean, my understanding of it is from what my partner was saying is that literally the minute that they're done eating, because most babies will eliminate after they eat, you just put them on the toilet right away. And so they'll get the hang of realizing toilet means go and you just do it immediately. And apparently what they were saying is that this is something that's done in East Asian cultures. Hmm. So I just Googled it. It said that this method is based on the idea that babies naturally signal when they need to go. So once you figure out your child's cues, you can position them over a potty and make a sound like a whistle or a hiss. And then they'll eventually respond by peeing or pooping on demand based on, oh my God, it's like conditioning them based on the sound that you make. So whenever they hear a whistle or a hiss, they're going to go to the potty. They're going to go to the bathroom. Wow. Yeah. But she, she was like, she was telling me that it was effective. So it must be an effective method. And if you really want to avoid the two and three-year-old potty training, I guess you can start at less than 12 months. That's true. Wow. But as somebody who has two kids and is probably done, I'm like not ready to give up anything about my baby. Like I'm, I need him in diapers right now. I need him to let me rock him to sleep right now. Like I just need some things. I'm not ready for him to grow up. So I'll just keep rocking the diaper. We're not doing potty training anytime soon. I could do without the diapers, but everything else is nice. (laughs) (laughs) The diapers to me is the least attractive part of a baby is their butt and all the stuff that comes along with it. But I mean, it gets worse though. Potty training to me is so much worse. I mean, once they can do it themselves, even right now, Jackson knows how to poop, but we still have to wipe his butt. That's true. Like mom, I'm done. And honestly, your child's butt is way grosser than my child's butt (laughs) because your son's poops are disgusting. Well, okay. I will tell you tonight they both pooped and they both are attempting to wipe their own butt. So I wonder like, when do you actually start teaching that? Do you, Um, or when I see that he does a good job and we're not there yet, (laughs) I've never taught him how to do that. He tries. He, they both tried tonight. Let me tell you that they both tried. They both, they both did it. Not well, (laughs) but I'm like, should we start teaching him? I saw this video online where like somebody was teaching their kids and they blew up, they blew up two balloons and put them side by side. Oh my gosh. (laughs) (laughs) And was teaching the kids how to wipe by using those two balloons as an example. Then the kids were like modeling it. (laughs) <laughs> with the balloon. Oh, I need to try oh that. Oh my gosh, that is so funny. <laughs> Stay tuned, people. We'll yeah. let you know how it goes. Right. This next part of potty training is butt wiping. You know, <laughs> gosh. Oh my gosh. Well, off limits with parenting. No, I mean this conversation can be more parent because I could not talk to my non-parent friends about pooping and peeing for a full hour. They would like <laughs> stare at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> So, so yeah, I mean, this is a part of, of childhood of toddlerhood that is kind of, it can be very, it makes you anxious. Just like the thought of doing it. I remember there were times I wanted to give up and where I wanted to be like, oh my God, I was just so frustrated. I thought it would be quicker than it was. I expected one thing and it wasn't that way, especially when they show success and they regress. It's like, you start, like you said, you question yourself, you get frustrated, but I, I'm so excited that, you know, there's another side and that they can get through it with patience and, and then eventually they'll be wiping their own butt and then they'll be wiping your butt when you're older. Eventually, yeah. <laughs> but you know, the thing about it is, isn't 
everything about motherhood kind of like this, like whether we're talking about sleep or nursing or transitioning from a crib to a big kid bed, like there's always these moments of frustration or just challenges. And then when you get to the end of it, it feels so rewarding. And so this is just another one of those things that it's not forever. And even in us having this conversation with two people who, you know, have kids who are always together, we even had a lot of differences in how we went about this. So there's really no right or wrong way, whether it takes a year or three days, or, you know, you're teaching about sensations in order to get them going versus where to put it. Like you can't do it wrong. Like your kid's going to eventually learn to hold their pee, eventually learn to go in the potty and, you know, it's going to be okay. Right. And, you know, I do think that our kids were helped by each other. I feel like them having the example of each other and being so close as far as like relationships go that they wanted to learn because their cousin can do it or they saw their cousin. So I think another effective method is having an example or a model like from daycare or if you have another child that's close in age, but definitely peer groups can motivate each other to learn quicker. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then, which also goes to show, like, talk to other parents who've gone through it. I mean, it, and that, I say that, you know, keeping in mind that don't use that as an opportunity to compare yourself, but just to have somebody to relate to, if you're getting frustrated or feeling overwhelmed so that, you know, okay, I'm not alone in this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I definitely spoke to other moms about it just to, I, I did compare. I wanted to know like, okay, so what are kids doing at this age? Is this normal? And also to get advice. Yeah. Yeah. Now I wish, you know, we have two boys, but I'm really curious to know, like, is it really easier for girls? Like everyone says that, but why is it easier? I don't know that I, I just know. read that as well. I have no idea. I, I, and I will never, well, Hey, maybe one day I will know, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I always thought maybe it's because like standing and sitting and just maybe developmentally as well. You know, yeah. they say that boys and girls develop at different rates. Mm-hmm. So maybe that has something to do with it. That's true. Now it's time for rapid fire where we answer questions related to the topic of the day. First question, what are some potty training supplies that you recommend? So the necessities I would say would be your potty, your wipes and like pull-ups or something like that to kind of transition to that. What about you? The supply I recommend is a book. We found that successful when he was sitting on the toilet, starting to make that association where he would sit there for a while. He had something to entertain him while he was sitting there. And it was usually one of the potty books that we would give to him. Oh yeah. Another thing I would say is like teaching about hygiene. So what you would need like a step up to get them to like, get to the sink, to wash their hands. And Mm -hmm. so, yeah, that's all you need. Yeah. Floor potty versus on the seat potty. (laughs) So got it. I mean, I used a floor potty and I guess I'll keep using it, but yeah, the floor potty on the floor, but the seat potty just seems like it'd be easier, but it's, we just use the floor potty. Mm -hmm. What about you? I prefer the, on the seat potty because it's much cleaner and neater, but I feel like you can't, you have to use both. Um, in my experience before they are stable enough to sit on the big potty, even with the training seat, they still need the little one. So I prefer the toilet seat potty, but we also, you must have the floor potty too. Yeah. What is your number one tip for dealing with potty training when traveling out of the house? Pack extra clothes. So you never know when they may have an accident and you never know when that accident may get on you. So pack an extra outfit for you and an extra outfit for your, for your child. Yes. My tip is to have them wear a pull-up or diaper when traveling outside of the house. If you're going to be in the car, if you're going to be somewhere for a very long time, there may be accidents, so you should be prepared by putting on a diaper or pull-up on the little one. Do you prefer diapers or pull-ups during the potty training time? Definitely pull-ups. I think that I 
like the idea that it's something different than what they had been using before. And then the pull-ups tend to be geared toward older kids, like toddler age. So they have characters and stuff like that, that they may get excited about. At least that's what Jackson did. So that's why I liked the pull-ups. Yeah, I agree with you about that. What excites them more. And it also fosters independence because they can put it on and off. It's kind of like a training bra. Like, you know, this is your practice ground for your underwear, but I personally prefer the diaper during the phase when they're kind of, when there are several accidents, because it's much easier to take off and on and to clean up. So for that reason, I prefer the diaper. It was so messy trying to clean. Have you ever trying to clean poop out of a pull-up? Yeah. Pull-ups are not <laughs> absorbent people. Like they're not made to hold a lot. So that is a big and they're difference. Messy if you they have a kid, messy. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is your number one potty training tip? My tip would be to try to keep it as light and encouraging as possible, because even though there'll be times of frustration, like even this week when Jackson had an accident, I was like very frustrated. Like, why? Like you have been doing this for so long. Why would you have an accident? I still try to keep it, you know, positive, like accidents happen. It's okay. Because even though you may have those frustrations, like they're learning and just giving, them, you know, opportunities to have these accidents is going to help them in the long run to know that they're not going to get in trouble. So I just say have grace with yourself and have patience with your kids. Mm -hmm. My tip is to be very aware of your little one, because in my experience and what I've also learned from reading about this is that the way to effectively potty train is to really pay attention to your child's responses and their, their, like their schedule, their body schedule. And so that means being aware of when they go, being aware of how they react to things. If you do incentivize with praise or with stickers, like how do they react? And based on that reaction, you should do more of that. And so I think if you're aware of your child and how, and what they're showing you, it might make the process easier. Even when those regression happens, when the regressions happen, maybe trying to find the, the theme or, you know, what is the bottom line as to like, why is this happening? So it's a lot of, you know, Sherlock combing and figuring things out, but that may help you learn more about your child and be more successful when it comes to potty training. Yeah, I like that. I do. So good luck out there. If you've got a little one who's ready for potty training and if you are in the midst of it, good job, mama, you're doing great. And If you're not quite there, then enjoy this time with those diapers. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss a thing and leave us a review. You can also follow us on Instagram at the cradle and all or email us at the cradle and all at gmail.com.